Hi guys, how are you? Mind this one, titanium. Patreon.com slash real macro. Welcome back. All right, let's do a video and let's go over some comments. Um, first of all, I like constructive comments. I do. Um, and I don't even mind trolling. You can troll me to you're blue in the face. <laughs> uh, doesn't mean shit to me. All right. Um, so l why is constructive criticism good? It's healthy, right? Um, it challenges you to really understand if you did make a mistake, if you, if you failed at something, if you didn't see something, right? You, uh, it's always really good to have, right? There's an exchange uh, of thoughts between people and it's ch challenged and, and, we, and we go through it, but not with vague hunches and feelings, right? We're going to use math facts uh, and data to determine what is true and what is not true. I follow people, not necessarily because I agree with them, okay, but because they help me uh, with my blind spots. Uh, they help me, even if they say something stupid, it might trigger something, you know, in my head that, hey, you know, did you look at this or how, how would you answer that, right? You really have to understand something uh, and think about it because the hardest thing to do in life is to find the question, right? If you find the question, you'll find the answer. If you don't know what the question is, then you'll never find the answer because you never know what the question is to begin with, right? So it's very important, very important. If you're the type of person that, that, that hates failure, okay, that, that can't stand it, that feels uh, insecure about failure and so forth, then you're never going to improve. Uh, you know, uh, it's just that simple, right? And that's just between me and you. You gotta be able to accept failure. You gotta be able to accept mistakes, okay? And you have to also be able to uh, learn from them and move on. Welcome them. Don't shy away. All right, that's my advice. All right, so we start the video today with the stock market, 184.7% of GDP. That is a bubble. That's a bubble in my book. Maybe not your book, but in my book, that is a bubble. Why is it a bubble? Because for my valuation, for Nick Hyonis, me, my valuation, that is excessive. Does it mean that the stock market cannot go 300% uh, of GDP, 400, 500, it can do whatever it wants. Okay, M again, my job is not to be um, a snake oil sa salesman and, you know, tell you how, you know, what the future is going to be and I have my model and I know what's going to happen and that, I've never said that, ever. My job is to uh, manage risk, find the best risk rewards, setups, take them, see if it works, if it doesn't, then it doesn't. It's that simple. But it is important to understand why something is behaving the way it is. That is very important. Uh, because you may come up with something simple and say, the market is a forward-looking indicator. Uh, you want to buy when there's blood in the streets. Um, you want to uh, buy uh, because uh, everybody else is buying. And, uh, you know, it has nothing to do with fundamentals. Price is the only thing that pays. You can come up with all these little lines. Buy the dips. You can come up with all of them. They sound great. The problem is, why is something happening? What is happening behind everything, right? That's what we want to figure out. So let's take a look at this comment from Mogio, and thank you for the comment. Let's try to be constructive and let's elaborate a simple thought. You keep saying that you, the stock uh, price doesn't match the economic fundamentals. But whoever proved that the stock market has such mirroring functions? Nobody. Yes, that's correct. Uh, it's, it, the stock market does not always behave on fundamentals, right? That's true. But it doesn't mean that when it becomes far detached from fundamentals, 
that something is not in a bubble, right? That's how you recognize a bubble. If all the people who invest in the stock will double tomorrow, the stock price will double. It's a supply and demand variable, nothing to do with matching the real economic uh, economy fundamentals with quotes, real economy. Okay, let me explain something to you. And thank you again. It, it's good to, to talk about this. Thank you for your comment. The price of something has three basic things. Okay, it's fundamentals, what the value of something is, okay, the mechanics, okay, how much supply of dollars do you have, okay, to purchase something, right, that's mechanics, where the money is flowing into, that is mechanics, okay, and then you have sentiment, sentiment is feelings, right, vague hunches and feelings, I feel that the market will go up. I like it. I like Bitcoin. I like gold. I like peak oil. I like fucking real estate. I have never once said that the market is driven by only fundamentals. Never. Go back in all my videos. I've been doing it for fucking 10 years. I've never said that. But there is a point when the market does become detached so far and so such extremes okay where um it is a point where you say you know what i'm not dealing with this shit this is fucked up it's just that simple why because everything is based on fundamentals everything okay something that i teach my kids or taught my kids okay you see a price tag of $100 of something. Never look at the price. The price doesn't tell you shit. Okay? Because if it's $100 for everybody, it's not really $100 for everybody. Because how many hours did you put in to make $100? Matters. That's value. So value is different for everybody in the economy. If I get paid $450, okay, an hour, it costs me minutes to buy that item, okay? If you are making, you know, $8 an hour, okay, or let's say even $10, make it easy. I right, see so $10 an hour, it's going to take you 10 hours to buy this item. You understand? For person A, okay, it took 24 minutes to purchase this. 24 minutes out of his life to go buy this item. For person B, and this is horrible, but it's $10, okay? It takes 10 hours, <laughs> right? So what's the value? The value is different, okay? The people, if they're logical, they'll... Th say okay i'm going to spend 10 hours of my life to go buy this candle <laughs> or whatever the fuck it is right it changes the the behavior okay so that's that's fundamentals mechanics you have two people okay they're bidding for something okay let's say in this case it's a pen okay it's a pen it's a fucked up looking pen whatever Right? And they each have $100. So the maximum that this pen will go for is $100. All right. Now, what if the government deficit spends another $100 into existence and everybody has or $200, let's say, and everybody has another $100, so now everybody has $200. What's the maximum that this pen can go for? Well, it's $200. That's it. You cannot go more than that. Okay. So you have the fundamentals of value. Then you have the mechanics. Okay. Money flows. And what do you think the stock market did in Venezuela during their hyperinflation? And I don't have the other chart, but I'll show you this one. Okay. It was up 800%. Okay. And this is why 
back in the day when uh, Peter Schiff was saying, oh, you know, short the stock market, uh, blah, 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 hyperinflation, hyperinflation, and you should buy gold. Uh, no. Why? Because stocks are the best when it comes to um, hedging inflation. Okay? It, it's that simple. The stock market did not crash in Venezuela and then gold went up, right? Both gold and the stock market went up, all right? So you'll never have a scenario with hyperinflation where the stock market is going straight down. Why? It's very simple. Again, it's the mechanics of it. It's the mechanics, right? The amount of Venezuelan boulevards or bull of whatever the fuck it's called, okay, to the supply of stock is always going to uh, increase faster than stocks, okay? So that means the stock price is going to rise. Might not rise as much as inflation, might not rise as much as gold, it might not do whatever, okay? But the revenue is going to rise nominally, okay? And so will profits nominally, Okay, so the stock prices will rise. Again, we go to the to the pen analogy, right? If you got a hundred dollars, then they can only go for a hundred dollars. If you have two hundred dollars, then it's going to be two hundred, and then three hundred. It's going to still. You're not going to get more pen, is what I'm trying to tell you. You're not going to get more pens. You're not going to get a bigger pen if you pay more for it, right? And that's why Buffett says. You know, price is what you pay, value is what you get. It's that simple, right? You're not going to get more pen or pens or bigger pen. Right? You're just going to pay a higher price for it. And just to pause for a minute, uh, Ronald says, why do you <laughs> always bag on Venezuela? Well, you know, they're, they're easy because everybody knows about Venezuela and it's a, it's a good analogy. Don't forget, I always mention also, it used to be Zimbabwe, by the way. I also mention Argentina and Turkey and Lebanon and so forth. So uh, that's why I'm bagging on Venezuela. And the last part is sentiment. Sentiment is vague hunches and feelings. Okay. Uh, vague hunches and feelings are often wrong. Often wrong. I really don't like those sentiment charts, okay? Uh, the, 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 there's natural sentiment of net uh, bullish and buyers or, you know, or whatever, bears. Or, I like it at extremes, I do. I, I'll pay attention to it, but I'm not going to weigh it 100%. I'll weigh it maybe 5% or 10% as to my decision as to what I want to do. So here's a good way that you guys can use your sentiment charts. Go out, get a practice account, start trading sentiment. See how you do. All right? If it's bullish, be bearish. If it's bearish, be bullish. Do the opposite. Go ahead. See how that works out for you. And what you're going to find out is it's worthless. Okay? It's garbage. Do the same thing with moving averages. Do the same thing with support and resistance. Do the same thing with candlestick patterns. Do it a hundred times. See what happens. It doesn't work. Now let's move on to the next um, comment the Mogil made. Are you still talking uh, after your calls of shorting the market? Worst call I've ever seen. Oh, believe me, <laughs> there's been a lot worse calls than mine. Where's your Eiffel Tower now? I have some idea, but it's clear you don't understand MMT, right? So this guy's an MMT, or he's he, uh, he's hard on. And you had a courage uh, to diss Mike Norman. Oh, okay. Now we see where the problem is. <laughs> also, what the fuck are you always laughing at? <laughs> I'm laughing at your stupidity, and I'm laughing at the market's stupidity. That's what I'm always fucking laughing at. You see, uh, this is not constructive, okay? You're not bringing anything to the game. Uh, you're talking stupidity. 
All right, so let's talk about this. Let's just get the Eiffel Tower uh, pattern out of the way really quickly. This chart goes all the way back to, let's go to 2008. There we are. Here was the bottom. Okay, and this is where we were when I was saying Eiffel Tower. And here's where we began. And it went vertical. This is an Eiffel pattern in the making. Does not mean that it cannot go straight up much, much more. It doesn't mean that. Okay. Now remember, I went bearish in September, late September, October, somewhere in there on the markets. Okay. Uh, of 2019. That's somewhere in here. All right. Again, just because I'm turning bearish doesn't mean the market cannot go up. <laughs> My job is not to tell you what the future is. Right. So here's October. Here. This is where I went. Right in here. All right. And then the market did this. And I said this. Oops. <laughs> there we go. This, okay, was euphoric. All right. And I said, look at the pattern. It's an Eiffel pattern, Eiffel Tower pattern. Now, remember, I was bullish since 2010, right? That's a decade. And then I turned bearish uh, in September. Now, let's talk about the Eiffel Tower. What happened next, right? Oh, oh, what happened? That's not an Eiffel Tower? No, that is an Eiffel Tower. Okay. Then the market goes up. What happens typically in uh, a market that is all on its own? It creates waves. Okay. It moves in waves. These waves, okay, when it's not manipulated, when it's just left alone, it's all by itself. These waves, okay, you cannot be involved in every single one of them why you cannot be involved in every single one of them because you're going to be flipping back and forth and back and forth chasing trying to pick tops and bottoms and tops and bottoms and tops and bottoms and that's not a very good idea typically the way markets move is like this or like this okay or sideways okay i call this an m pattern i call this a one two three up or one two three down okay and then it starts to reverse we also have other patterns, right? You get the Eiffel Tower, you got the Olympic, right? Where it kind of got, kind of does one of these jobs and then it pops up. You got many, many different ways. Trading wave number two is never a good idea. Why is it not a good idea? Because when you get the first thrust down move out of a structure, okay, let's say this is a one, two, three structure, right? It's, it's pointing up and then it's going to move to the way in the opposite direction. Okay. So you get the thrust down move and then you're going to get a bounce. Okay. Some people say, oh, it's a 50% to 61%. It, I don't know when that point is. Why do I not know this? Because when you get the first thrust down and then you try to trade the wave two, where you don't know where it's going to end, there's no signal as to when this will end. Will it end somewhere here and then go down? Or will it go all the way up, go just prior to the top and then roll back down, creating uh, a sideways market? Or is it going to uh, do something like this where it's gonna come all the way up, break the top, break the top, and then start to fall apart and create again a sideways market where it will break the bottom and then it will start going sideways. Which one of these three patterns is it? I don't know. That's why I don't like wave two. So here's a very good example. Here's the S&P 500, okay? Dot com, goes straight down, then goes back up, breaks the top slightly, and then falls back down. See, one, two, three, creates a sideways market, a very big one. Okay. And then finally breaks out and off we go to the races, right? And you saw what happened after that. Now, this 
when it bounced, okay, this is the part where you're saying, okay, how much is this going to bounce, right? Now, typically in a recession, because this is far beyond the recession, this has nothing to do with 2000 or 2008. This is far, far worse. The market should never be this high. Never. It literally, literally, I'm not kidding. You can see it in the chart, right? Literally, it took years, years before we even made it to the previous high after um, 2008. Years. You know how long it took this time around? Months. Okay? And it went from 30% down, whatever it is, straight up. You think that's normal? You think buying the dips, this is what you should be doing, that it's prudent? You think that this is 2008? With the number one, two, three, and four economies in the world shut down, global trade all fucked up, small businesses going out of business, right? People, helicopter money, here, here take uh, $300, $600, uh, Fed facility window, everything, borrow, borrow, we'll, we'll forgive it later. You think, you think this is normal? Honestly, do you? You think I was wrong? No. From a risk reward perspective, which is what I do. Okay, I don't know what the fucking future does. Right? This is a bubble. This is extreme. You cannot have the economy going this way and the stock market going that way. Okay? There's something fundamentally wrong with that. And if I don't come out and tell you this in these videos to understand that there's a time to be in the market and there's a time to be out of the market, okay, doing nothing, and there's a time to short the market, right, to understand when these things occur, okay, and then why am, I in, why am I doing videos? I should just come out and do what everybody else says, so oh, the market is up today. Um, the market is up because of China trade deal. Uh, the market is up today because uh, the numbers were better than expected. The Fed said this, the market is up today. You, you want me to do that? I think you got a billion people doing the same shit, rationalizing what's already happened the short term. So let's look at it this way. QE1, more QE, QE2, twist, blah, 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 right? Money printing all the way up. And I said, this is MMT everything. And when I posted this was whatever, far, far lower, right? What happened to the stock market? It went straight up. Why? Why? Because the pen is actually shrinking. It's not the same and it's not bigger and it's not more pens. There's actually less pen, right? And the dollars that people had to bid for that pen has increased. Therefore, you're going to get uh, an increase price in stocks, which has nothing to do with fundamentals, nothing. Well, it doesn't have to be anything with fundamentals. Yes, but it does. Because if you're going to have people buying stocks for the sake of buying stocks, okay, well, then it's Bitcoin. It's like Bitcoin, right? It's just for the sake of it. And what happened to Bitcoin? This is what happened to Bitcoin. It went straight up and it came straight down. <laughs> right? And by the way, I did tell you to short the Bitcoin here or to get out of it. Right? And I told you to buy down here. Not at 2000 at 6000 actually. Okay? And it went even lower. Where is it today? Right? Right back up. Okay. So even if you're trying to play this, well, the market just does whatever the market does and doesn't care about fundamentals and nobody ever proved that. And okay, fine, that's great. You still end up with a fucking bubble. <laughs> Bitcoin still took a fucking shit. All right. So even if you go with, with that thesis, you're wrong there too. Okay. It's still a bubble price wise. So what happened, right? What happened? 
when you start pumping in trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars, whatever happened technically, okay, is going to be uh, different. So that's why I have said that there's two kinds of markets. You have a wave market that kind of moves in a wave, okay, and then you have a particle market. Particle market when it just goes straight up. Now this particle market has been observed many times by me when uh, in, in small time frames. A piece of news comes out and then it just does this, okay? It's got nothing to do with the way the markets trade, all right? which includes algorithms, by the way. So what does this mean? Well, this is what this means, that the government came in and manipulated the mechanics of markets with supply. It backstopped risks for bonds for many asset prices. It flooded the system with cash. 4 trillion in um, QE, which does not mean increased deficits, but what it does mean is that you're converting bonds to cash and that cash can buy stocks, uh, bonds, real estate, whatever. Okay, so that's 4 trillion from the Fed that was pumped, plus another 4 trillion, which is even more now, okay, in deficits, which is 20% of GDP. And it's actually more now because GDP is way down. So if we influence this, is what they're thinking, right? Then we're going to influence this, right? Dumbasses like you, where your sentiment is going to be like, look, the market is going up. The market is going up. Look, you know, you're wrong. Oh, you're wrong. No, it's going to uh, influence this. And this is again another reason. Your comment, not your first one. Your first one is good. The second comment, your second comment, is more proof that this is a bubble because you actually believe this is real and you don't give a shit about fundamentals. And this is the same exact fucking problem that I had with ShiftBots back in 2008. Oh, gold is real money. Oh, look at the gold prices compared to stocks. Oh, gold is, right? It's the same thing. It's the same thing with peak oilers. Oh, it takes one barrel of oil to extract a barrel of oil. We're a peak oil. Oh. Right? Remember those guys? Right? What happened to that? It was $150 then a uh, barrel of oil. Now it went to negative 35. Right? But I didn't get the Eiffel Tower right? Really? Hmm. How about Bitcoin? Oh, Bitcoin is the blockchain. <laughs> it's the blockchain. You don't get it. This is the future. Yeah, there's, there's a price for everything. Right? There's something that's called value. Okay? <laughs> There's something that's called, not that Bitcoin has fundamentals, but there's something that's, you know, fundamentals think of value, okay? Think, think of it that way. Everything has a value. Oh, real estate. Oh, it's not like stocks. It's real brick and mortar. I can piss on it. I can blow it up. I can do whatever I want. God is not making any more land. Go buy real estate. What happened to that? They all got blown up. Now, if you followed me, you know you know that I always shitted on bear shitters. I did, right? But this is not the time to be bear, to be shitting on bear shitters because they're right now. They are right that they pumped so much money that they manipulated the mechanics. They affected people like you, right? An mmt -er, somebody who cannot understand that the government cannot print value for a currency. You can print digits, you can do whatever you want, okay? But you're not going to get more GDP. You're not going to get more productive output. Just because you, you can print digits doesn't mean you should print digits because you're not going to improve the economy. You're just going to inflate asset bubbles. That's the problem with MMT. Now, again, I'm going to say it. I didn't mind it in 2008. You, you can't have an economy without a banking system. Okay? It's an interbank QE thing, whatever. I get it. You know, lower interest rates, suppress them, let people refinance, and then go on with your life. That's not what they did now. Okay? And I'm not saying that they shouldn't deficit spend. Of course they should. They should give $600. They should give $1,000. 
to the everyday people until this pandemic is dealt with. But you don't go out and start giving everybody and their fucking mom billions and trillions of dollars backstopping their risk. Because if I can go out and buy a junk bond, okay, and saying, okay, well, I'm assessing my risk and I'm, I, I think this junk bond is going to do well or whatever, I'm going to get my money back and then make some profit, that's fine. Right? But if you're going to say, I'm going to buy the junk bond because I don't even think this fucking company is going to survive, but hey, you know, the Fed is going to bail them out and deficits will bail them out and everybody and their mom is going to bail them out, so there's no risk for me. Fuck it, I'm buying it. Right? That's not, that's not normal. That's not, <laughs> that's not what MMT was supposed to be for, right? You cannot go to a roulette table, put down a thousand dollars in red, black comes out, and say, oh, huh, it's okay, black came out, here's $2,000, go back and, and bet again, right? That's not the way it's supposed to work. Why? Because you can't find um, a price discovery. You can't find the value of something. It skews the fundamentals. And when the fundamentals are scratched out and you end up in a bubble, okay, reality is going to hit at some point when is it i don't know <laughs> i've never claimed that i do know i'm just telling you that this is a fucked up market and you shouldn't be involved in thinking oh look your market is going up every day you are probably the dumbass over here with fucking peak oil all right this is oil peak oil oh look the market is going up it's peak oil yeah it's got to be true you know why is the market going up right you know you know, fuck fundamentals. The fundamentals say that it's peak oil. What happened? What happened? Right? It went negative. <laughs> you think you you think for one second that that this was going to happen back here? Did you believe that anywhere at some point? No. It went negative. I couldn't tell you why it's going to go negative. <laughs> it's going to collapse. This is what people need to hear. They need to hear what reality is. Okay, I'm not sitting here telling you, you know, that market cannot go higher. You can do whatever it wants. You know, did I miss out on it? Yeah, okay, I missed out on it. Based on your way of trading where I always have to be involved in the market and every time the market goes against what Nick says, then, you know, it's a failure. It's not a failure. It's a failure from the standpoint that I did not understand how fast the deficits and the QE would affect the stock market. That that money is going to flow from there into the stock market. That, yeah, 100% wrong. But do you think I'm going to make that mistake again? Nope. Not going to make that mistake again. right? And that's why it's good to learn. And that's why I keep making these videos. And I keep telling you that MMT is bullshit. MMT is for the top 5%. Why? because it will always backstop the risk for the top 5%. It's not going to end up as our savings that Natasha Kelton and Mosler are telling you. It's not our savings, it's our liabilities. And that's why uh, debt to GDP is now what, 140, right? A few, dec uh, a decade ago it was 60% debt to GDP. Now we're 130%. 140% of GDP. Where's all the economic growth? We are back to uh, 2014 levels of GDP. The economy is back to 2014. And you printed fucking trillions of dollars. We went from 10 trillion, we're going to be in 30 trillion here soon. Does MMT work? No, it doesn't. I'm sorry. Right? Look at COVID. Did, did their little spreadsheet show that COVID was going to can possibly occur? No, because they work in an incubator. Okay, they're designed. They're, the MMT and all the I don't know the other incubators or all these people. Oh, we just print money and everything. We're going to stimulate. It's for the people and all this bullshit, right? They work off incubators. They they work off an economy that was so big and great, okay, and growing. They're working off that model that we can just print forever. It's like owning a big ass house that's worth five million dollars and you're just you know taking a home equity loan every single day to go out and spend and saying look i'm doing great look uh, you know i bought a fucking uh, you know lamborghini meanwhile your debt to the value of that home 
is 130, 140%. And you're still sitting here telling me, well, you know, everything is great. No, it's not great. We're headed in the wrong direction. Does that mean we're going to hyperinflate? No. Uh, but we're heading in that direction. We're running in the dark, blind, towards a cliff. Same thing with gold. Oh, gold is going up every day. Gold is real money. Buy gold. Peter Schiff said buy gold. Right? What happened? <laughs> right? That's what happened. And again, you're making the same fucking mistake with stocks. You don't have to be involved in stocks. That's what I'm telling you. That's what people need to hear. You're making profit? Great. Take it. Run. All right? That's... That's smart, okay? Because tomorrow, the market could, could, could go down, and the day after, and the day after, in the week, you'll be down 30%, right? And remember, no matter how high a price goes, you're always 100% from zero. So you're talking about a 30% drop, you're talking about big fucking problems for somebody's portfolio. And let's be realistic here, okay? Don't sit here and tell me that every uh, every stock market, I mean, every stock in the stock market has gone up what you're looking at is four or five stocks that are driving the index higher and everything else sucks okay so if you think like oh i bought the market i'm smart no no that, that that's not what happens to the vast majority of the people the vast majority of the people are, are holding various different stocks but the facts that you don't understand these things the fact that you don't have a clue about them okay is more reason why i should make these videos all right that, that's just the way it works the, he, here's here's the fags right here all right you see anything wrong with this it's just mechanics it's just everybody is buying the same four or five stocks it's going straight up and that's it and and that leads you to believe that all the other stocks are doing the same thing no they're not no they're not you know what the pe for the um, um small caps are 95. <laughs> it's 95 right that's what it is it's not the same thing i'm telling you it's it's a bubble and you need to hear it other people need to hear it it's it's, it's there's a time to be in the market and a time not to be in the market. And if you think it's wrong for me to double down, I'm not going to double down. I'm going to a thousand times down that this is a bubble. A thousand times. I will keep saying it. <laughs> Even if it goes down 10%, 20%, 30%, I will keep saying it. I will say it until I'm blue in the face. Do you know when you make mo money in markets? When it's boring. When it's the, This is where you make money right here this is where, where everything is boring this is when you make money you don't make money here this is garbage this is garbage this is not where you make money okay but you don't know that you're a newbie you're some guy that thinks it has to always be in the market it's going down i got i got a short it's going up i have to buy i have to uh, that's what you, that's what you are. That's why you'll never make money. That's why you'll never invest. You think Buffett is fucking stupid for being 145 billion in cash? Hmm? Do you? Only people who are buying this market, right, are fund managers who are given trillions of fucking dollars to go out and invest. That's their job. That's the mechanics of it. And if you're going to give them cash and you're going to backstop their risk, they're going to go out and buy. It's that simple. And that's the learning lesson for me. That's the learning lesson for me. And that should be the learning lesson for you too. And everybody else. Okay? That they're going to keep pumping money until um, um, uh, affecting the mechanics and the sentiment. And the law of diminishing returns is going to kick in at some point. Because the more you print, the more you need to print. Okay? And then you end up in a situation where it's very undesirable. Very undesirable. And if you want to talk about the dollar... Let's take a look at, at the dollar, right? The dollar has been falling for many years. And if, if it's been falling recently as well. Okay, and you can come up with all the stories that you want, why the dollar is falling and it's bullshit and it's this and the sentiment and whatever. 
it doesn't matter. You know what does matter? That back in 2008, it reached the level that was uh, historic. Okay? Down to 70, 71, whatever it was. So, you want to go out and buy stocks? Please, by all means, don't fucking uh, listen to me. Oh, I, what, what, I, I don't trade for you. Right? I don't do that for you. You do that for you. Everybody else does that for them. Okay? Go out and buy it. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Go ahead. Enjoy it. I'm just telling you that this is a bubble. This is not normal. This is fucked up. And you do not need to be involved in the markets. I am literally doing, I don't know, I'm trying to quit smoking for one. <laughs> I'm exercising. I'm getting my dog's anal gland squeezed. I don't give a shit about the market right now, to be honest with you. I don't. I just sit there. I'm like, oh, it's up again. Hmm, that's odd. <laughs> All right. But who cares? Leave it. Let them bid up the price on themselves. Let them print the trillions of dollars that they want. Let them backstop all that. I don't give a fuck. I don't need to chase. I don't. I can do other things. Okay? I pick my points where I want to go short. It doesn't go. Oh, well. Okay? But let me remind you that all of last year, I was down 50%. And then you know what happened? I went up 20% for the year. And then you know what happened? I went from 100000 to $860,000 on the short, on the COVID. Okay? It's that simple. When it hits, it hits. That's what I give a shit about. I don't give a shit that people are bidding up the price of themselves and chasing. If you think this is not an Eiffel Tower, if you think this is normal, buy, my friend, buy. Because it will only go up. It wasn't an Eiffel Tower here either. It wasn't. Not at all. Not at all. All right, guys. That's it for my uh, comments, rants, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is my case. Uh, this is what I believe. This is what I see. Take it, leave it. You don't have to watch the videos, right? You want to leave a constructive criticism? Please, by all means, do. This is good. This is healthy. You want to be a dick? Uh, I don't like to block people. I think, you know, you can say whatever you want to say. Uh, but try to be constructive, please. You might learn something. I might learn something. Other people might learn something. Right? And I tell myself once a week, you know, when I was saying, here comes stimulus week, here comes stimulus month, here comes stimulus year, right? I should have been buying. Why? Because I know better. I know how MMT works. I know that all government deficits are going to be assets to the top 5% and liabilities to the other 95%. For that, I kicked myself in the ass. I made a mistake. I should have done it instead of posting little fucking stupid tweets of here comes stimulus, ha ha ha, right? But the economy is, is not only domestic, but worldwide is so devastatingly bad, okay, that I never thought that people will be that fucking stupid that they're going to go out and and buy stocks. I didn't. I think they will have some kind of logic and say, well, you know, maybe we should wait and see how this plays out. And for that, I made a mistake. That was a failure on my part. And I say that once a week. I even post it to my subscribers. I say, you know what? I fucked up on this. Here's junk bonds. Look what happened to the junk bonds. Fed comes in, starts buying them. Look, <laughs> look what happened straight up. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, if that's the game, then that's the game. That's the way it works. All right. Take care, guys. Please leave comments, criticize, do whatever you want, troll, enjoy yourself. I'll talk to you guys soon. For everybody else, I hope you learned something. Uh, remember that the market uh, has four... Uh, as three, uh, four, three aspects: fundamentals, mechanics, and sentiment. Okay, and the the government is trying to affect this to affect the sentiment, right? Disregarding fundamentals, uh, and this leads to bubbles. All right, all right. Talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye bye.